<laughs> okay, hello and welcome to this week's CDA panel discussion. Uh, I'm Emily from ET Casting and joining me I have Maddie Hinton from Maddie Hinton Casting and Carmel Cochran from Carmel Cochran Casting. Hi guys. Hello. Um, would you like to just give us a little bit of an overview of what you both typically cast? Sure. I mean, I do a mix of commercials, TV and film. So it's a bit of everything, really. Uh, I do quite a lot of comedy-based stuff uh, for TV. Worked on the Conan O'Brien show when they've been over in the UK. Done some uh, uh, casting for a big series in uh, Asia called Meteor Garden. Uh, worked on some big films a while ago, things like Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, and yeah, bits and pieces, lots of stuff. Good stuff. And come out. Just waiting for that lorry to go past. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I do commercials, music videos, uh, film, TV. Um, I did the end of the effing world in a film called The Lighthouse. Um, yeah. I do whatever. <laughs> Great. I'm exactly the same. I do whatever. I do a little bit of everything. Um, okay, so this week's topic is film and TV casting and the CDA have been um, filtering through lots of, lots of tweets from actors from all around uh, and we've pulled out, I think, you know, some topics or some questions that cover most of what everybody was asking. So we'll kick off with the first one, which is, does experience uh, having formal training and having a spotlight page really matter in the long scheme of things who wants to kick off with this i think i think it depends on what what role you're going for what film what project it is ultimately yes because that's where we you know every day i log on to spotlight that's where i send my briefs out but then there is the occasion like when we cast uh, liam walpole in the goob he'd done nothing we just saw him on the street and he you know ended up being the lead in a feature film so Horses for courses, it depends on, on what, what we need and ultimately what we're trying to achieve or what we've been told to do as well. That's Yeah. And you can find, you know, in terms of looking for people, there's you know, someone like Bria Vanite or, you know, people can be found just through Instagram or social media, people with a follow, you know. It, yeah. We can find talent anywhere and everywhere, really. Maddie? Absolutely. I think it's... I think if you want acting to be your career, if that's what you've chosen, I think then yes, the spotlight page would be quite important. But I think that's not necessarily all that we look at. Like you say, it depends on what we're looking for. And there are so many avenues now to find people. You know, there's no right or wrong way. Yeah, I think that that's the important thing, Maddie, is that if you set out and, you know, you go to drama school and you've paid and you've invested, then it would seem hand in hand to have all of those professional tools it's you know if you're a plumber you go to work with a wrench I don't even know what a wrench is <laughs> it makes sense it makes sense <laughs> but I think that you know because um I got into a conversation a couple of days ago about the difference between a professional actor and someone that you know sometimes we post jobs saying that we're looking for real people I think that there's jobs for everybody and just because you're looking one route doesn't mean you're taking away from the people that have trained and invested it's just you know there are different ways to find people and yeah sure okay um does experience in other areas count e example online sketches theater tv commercials short films i'm trying to make sense of this question a little bit i guess they mean does it count um in terms of I don't know, having a shot at cracking a big role or? Absolutely, it counts. It's all experience. You know, it's better to have, be doing things like that and be showing that you're doing things rather than nothing. Because it doesn't matter if it's a tiny little yeah. you know, web series or if it's a commercial, anything like that. You are, you're out there, you're showing what you can do in, a, in whatever, you know, aspect it is. Yeah, and you, you could pick up, you could see someone in a TV commercial and yeah. you think, geez, they've got great <laughs> timing. That's really well, funny. When, when we cast um, all the smaller parts in the, the end of the effing world, everyone 
you know, most of those people were people that I've you know grown up with coming into commercials like Polly yeah. and you know. And so also, think, if you look at people who used to come in for commercials, you know, all those people are quite a lot of them now are doing big Oscar winning some of them roles, and they did commercials not that long ago. So you can't yeah, all right. one media. Everyone start somewhere so you yeah. just do you know I think as long as you've got morals and you know if there's something that you don't if there's something that you feel strongly about not doing then don't do it yeah commercial wise but I think there's nothing wrong with them short films are great online sketches are great absolutely and some people are happy just doing commercials yeah you know the projects are short and fast great turnaround time they pay fairly well sometimes uh these days I don't know. um you know some people are just ha happy being career commercial actors as well but i don't i don't think that that's that yeah that shouldn't be seen as a negative not at, no, yeah, not at all no like there are theater actors just i think i think what i think it's just important to take away just do what makes you happy yeah happen slightly but you know that's a really good note to end that one on yeah do what yeah. makes you happy i like that um, okay, I like this one. Should you come into the room in character? How do you guys feel about this? No. <laughs> I generally know. Because often, like, when somebody comes in the room, you often want to have a bit of a chat beforehand as well. Yeah. And, I mean, I know some people, it might be there, the way that it helps them do the whole audition is to be in character. And if that's what works, then that's what you should do. But I would say generally, come into the room as you and then... I've, I've had a couple of directors request that actors come in mm. in character. Because um, they don't need them in and, as and that's fine. You know, yeah. if that's what's asked for, then absolutely. But And I think yeah. it's fine as long as, as we have a heads up of what's going on, because I find it weird. So I've, I've had it before where you've almost, I almost have a pre-chat outside the room and then they come in and then it's all fine. Yeah. But I, yeah, I find it's stilted, the, the natural conversation. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And especially if it's like a character that's maybe a little dark, uh, say, like yeah, a bit yeah. you know, aggressive or something like that. And if you don't know that somebody's coming in in character, you can, it can really put you off and then you can struggle to kind of... To do your job. You take on that energy. You take exactly. on that energy. And that, yeah. That's a really good point. Um, okay. So what about if, an, if a role requires an accent? How do you guys feel about an actor coming into the room with that accent if it's not their natural one? I think it depends on who's in the room. I think if it's just the casting director, they don't need to worry about the accent until they're being filmed. But, but if I do think there's there? people, directors, and that once they've heard the natural accent and then it goes into a different accent, they can find it quite jarring and never sort of hear the accent as yeah. well as well as it's being done. They're always hearing the natural accent coming through. Yeah. Whereas if you never hear that natural accent, they just accept what's been in front of them. That's right. Yeah. They're not preconditioned to think, oh, so-and-so is Irish when they're doing an yeah. American accent. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. I, th I agree. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, okay, what about any tips on what to wear and should you wear makeup? And that goes for both men and women, of course. I think just come in and however you feel comfortable. Like if you don't naturally wear makeup, I don't really. So I, I'm really conscious that I've like messed up my eyeliner this morning and it's distracting. It's off putting. So if, yeah, if I didn't naturally wear it, if you don't naturally wear it or you don't want to, don't do it. Um, if you are going to wear it, I would say keep it, keep it fairly natural as well. Unless the role calls for it, then maybe you can have a little bit more fun with it. But um, yeah, and I think I find lip gloss very distracting. Lip, lip gloss, gloss, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think as well, like bright red lips, you know, yeah. if you go full on, they just in terms of how the camera sees it, it can be quite distracting as well. So it's yeah. not so you can't have bold, but just if it's too much, it can be a little bit, it detracts sometimes from what you're actually doing. That's right. Same with heavy jewellery. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, despite what I'm wearing today, if you were standing in front of a screen and you know, we're being filmed, wearing stripes, fine stripes is generally a bit of a no-no. It can, it can really cause havoc with pulling focus. Yeah. Um, I think definitely like neutral is kind of your yeah. best call. I also think taking into account maybe the role you're going for. Yeah. 
without going into, I'm not talking like full costume, I'm just talking like, just sort of think about like if you're going in for someone who works in the city, for example, as opposed to someone who's, I don't know, driving a taxi, then you're gonna, you can just kind of cater what you're wearing, what your makeup is to that, without it being a full, you know. Costume, outfit. yeah, yeah. yeah sort of nodding to it because it just helps everyone else see you in that role yeah i agree i just i'm a fan of a white t-shirt and a pair of jeans or you know, yeah a, yeah it's classic works for most things yeah in my own life no, no well. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um okay should you be completely off book is coming into the room with sides okay how do we feel about that so I, my, I, I feel really strongly about this. I feel like if we've sent you the material a week before, which we, we tend to do on all the TV and film stuff that we do, yeah. you, should, you, should, you should know it. Absolutely. If you sent it the night before, just do what you can. You know, you might have a job. You might, I, I remember one night particularly where I had to go in for a meeting the next day and my kid, one of them, I can't remember which one, was up all night and I just wasn't prepared and I couldn't get prepared because every time I tried to read, I was having a kid like be sick on me. So it's, but then by the next day she was fine, I was fine. It, it's just do what you can. Yeah. yeah. Be the best I also think you if you're going to bring the sides into the room and that's, you know, like you say, that's fine. You might have only got the script the night or the morning of, who knows, but just learn how to use that without it blocking you. If you've yeah. got, you know, if you've got, yeah, exactly. Like, don't hold it up here. Hold it below, yeah. and also just try and keep looking up as much as possible. Pause if you need to. You know, there are. I think also it's like if you fluff, you know, if you've learnt it and you know it, and it's nerves, and you've some kind of fluff a line or whatever. Don't panic about it. Just kind of give yourself a keep breath, and start yeah. again, or you know, pick and it up from there. Roll with it, yeah, yeah. Roll with and, it. and also, we know we're the people sending you the material, so. Yeah. We know if you've had a week, we know if you've only had a few hours. So, I think that's the only thing that I get slightly cross about is when I'm sat there and it has happened and I'm sat there with the director and the producer and they'll say, oh, have you read the script? And they're like, no, I didn't get sent it. I and I'm like, got this. I sent it to you. It yeah. was me. It wasn't anyone else. I sent it. Yeah. Um, that's incredibly frustrating. Yeah. Don't throw me under a bus. <laughs> Yeah. Unless I genuinely haven't sent it, which has happened, in which case totally throw me under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, if you're sent the full script, okay, this is something someone's um, tweeted in. If you're sent the full script, I assume you should read it. Yes. Yes. But what other things can you do to prep? And can you do too little prep, too much prep? I would say going to a casting is a bit like going for a job interview. Yeah, so you, you do is, you do yeah. your prep. You know, you look, you research who's involved. You read the full script. You give it as much as you've got. Yeah, you understand yeah. the characters to you know your perception of them, but also be willing to kind of take on somebody else's perception of them. Mm. I think don't prep too yeah. much. Don't prep so that you become fixed and rigid, so that when we flip yeah. it on you and say, "Oh yeah, we really like that," but now we want you to do it totally opposite. Yes. You can't break away from that. You can't be so well, set in I... your head that something's got to be played a certain way. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm the queen of under prepping. Like I go into meetings having done nothing. And, and it's awful. It's just the worst thing for you as a person. Because, you know, <laughs> you just don't know anything. And yeah, I, that's my thing that I'm working on. <laughs> I think that in terms of reading the script, I know that was part of it, it's like absolutely you should read the script and understand all of it because there might be you know, a question that comes up, have you read the script or what did you think about when that happens? And if you kind of just glanced at it, you're, you know, you're kind of going to panic mode. Or just say you haven't read yes. it, if you haven't read the whole thing. I've really read it. Absolutely, <laughs> don't try and wing it. <laughs> and yeah. I think you know the script contextualizes everything so ultimately it is as long as you've had notice this is all so long as you've had enough time to do it i'm not talking about if you get spent in the script the night before i i really don't yeah but then we wouldn't have, expect you to either because we know when we've sent you the the material exactly, so exactly. yeah yeah um okay now do you let actors know if they've not got the job 
I think, I mean, I know this is a CDA thing, and I, um, both M and I are ex-board members, so I know that the, the CDA stance is that you absolutely, we absolutely encourage everyone to let anyone who's been on for casting know, but obviously there are people who are on pencil and they should be let know, you know, that you should let them know directly. Yeah, um, call, call their agent. Call their agent or if they're direct, then you get in touch with them. If someone has just been in for a casting, it's often put out as a blanket message on Spotlight or social media or whatever platform you use. Um, so do keep an eye out for those because those do sometimes get missed. And I think it depends on what type of project. So for commercials, I don't. If, if it's a general casting and we've seen 30 people, I, I wouldn't send an email to every single person and say, sorry, you haven't got the job. I do to people who have got penciled and I do um, then send a general message. But for example, this TV show that we're doing, we started casting in January. We have done a, like a mini callback uh, via Zoom in March. We still don't know who's cast, yeah. other factors. So I'm trying my best to keep everyone in the loop and say, look, we still don't know, we still yeah. don't know. I think that's where it all starts to fall apart because suddenly things move forward five steps and you know you can't quite remember who you've told and especially now that I don't have you know people in the office I'm having to do it all myself and color coordinating my excel when I've sent people emails so yeah I'm, you know and I think that that's understandable uh, I think there's just been an issue with it in the past that people have been casting you know even just commercials and they just haven't yeah, yeah. You know, had the respect for the actors to to just shoot a message and say, "Look, it's been cast. Thanks for coming in." You know, that's that easy, really. And I think it's knowing as well that with commercials, sometimes you really don't know until you know eight pm the night before the yeah. shoot. We sure. really keep you hanging on. They, they really do. <laughs> I think also though, in the film and TV thing, like you were saying, sometimes things just take so much longer. Yeah. Anyone expects that Especially people now it's oh, just I haven't heard, so they haven't let me know. And it's like we haven't heard because we don't know. Because we haven't heard yet, and once we do, we will let you know. Yeah. 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 And I, and we had that a lot on um a, a TV show that we did for Sky where we kind of kept people and then offered them a different part. So I, I'm really loath to say, oh no, there's no interest. Yeah. Because I know that we're thinking about them for another part, but similarly I don't want to say Oh no, we're, you know, we're interested because we know how often things change. And I'll get a list from a director one minute that's got 20 people on it. And then that list can come back through in various different forms once the producers chipped in and, you know. That's right, it can all change again, it, yeah. And so I don't want to be telling 50 people that we're interested because ultimately there's one role, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, guys, what are your top do's and don'ts? Don't shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even before lockdown. Yeah. yeah. I've always yeah. had hand sanitizer in the studio. You can't shake a hundred hands in a day. It's not healthy for anyone. <laughs> One of these is good. Hi. Yeah, Hi. yeah a wave is always yeah. good. Don't yeah. chew gum. What chew gum. It? Coming into the room chewing gum. It's a killer. Um what else? I would say don't <laughs> look at, don't sit in the waiting room and look at everyone else in there and all of a sudden wonder why you're there or assume there's been a mistake. You know, just because you're the only redhead in a room full of people with blonde hair, we've chosen you for a reason. You're always going to be there for a reason. Don't yeah. start to, you know, sort of lose confidence <laughs> by looking at other people. I think it's remembering that you're there because we want you there, not because we're That's right. doing to, to, to have a laugh or to make anyone feel uncomfortable. It's like, we want to give people, that's the best part of my job is giving someone else a job. That's all I can, you know, that's, that's where I can. And we, we'd have sifted through thousands and thousands of, of headshots and bios to choose just the 12 or just, you know, people to actually come in. So you've already made it through one round without even doing yeah, anything. And I think as well, my biggest thing at the moment is if something happens that makes you feel uncomfortable or, or you, you know, you, you didn't quite like the way something went down, pick up the phone, send an email, like don't, don't launch into Twitter. I remember a couple of months ago seeing someone who said about, you know, they'd had this really bad audition and I thought, oh, that's, that really sounds like our job, but it can't be because I'm nice. I would never have made someone feel like that. Yeah. Um, and 
without going into too much, I'm just trying to think of what I can say without it becoming too. Mm -hmm. We had done we had done callbacks in the morning that the director and um, client no the director had chosen so we had 11 to 1 for the callback session then at like 10 o'clock that night the client came back and we're like oh we like these four people where well, the director was like well i'm never going to cast them but if you want to see them we'll do it but at one o'clock i had to go to go and pick up my daughter from nursery so in 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 the actor's defense what happened when they got there at one o'clock is we all left but that that was always we were always going to finish at one and it wasn't something that we'd done to make anyone feel uncomfortable nor did I think that I needed to explain what was going on because I you know I didn't yeah well was the actor just running late or no 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 they because we scheduled, we scheduled ah. one to three for these other three people and right. and then she was like and I just got the assistant and it's like but yeah that's sadly and also the assistants like you know don't you should never be yeah, we've got the assistant because yeah, we we've, we've all done that, and also like we put a lot they're of there because we trust them. And, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and, and they can't talk back to us, and they have good judgment. That's why we have them there in our stead if we can't be there. Yeah, yeah, that's and I think the also another don't. Sorry, which really is a bugbear of mine is don't sit in the waiting room and bad mouth the recep like, the receptionist or whoever's yeah. there because they are just doing their job and. Things that you say in the, in the waiting room in a negative fashion will get yes. fed back to us. Always comes back. Kind of that, you know, just be nice. And sometimes things are running late and sometimes, you know, it's out of everyone's control a little bit and that does happen. And it, it is frustrating for everyone involved. And But if you're just nice to everyone, it's just, it's a better atmosphere all round. And you'll then, have a better audition. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I think that's the thing as well. Like, oh, we need to get this person out because they're in a really yeah. bad mood and they've been rude yeah. to everyone in the other room. Yeah. yeah, It's like the do's and don'ts. I think one of the, what I, I always find the key, the key things of if you can relax, which I know is hard when there are nerves and you're kind of really, you really want something and it's hard to then relax. But it just, if you can make your work, nerves work for you, it just helps your performance so much more. So much the, more. And I think I... Okay. By remembering that, you know, we've chosen you. Yeah. To come we in. want you to do the best you can That's do. That's right. Hopefully that will, if people know that, they'll be able to kind of go, okay, I'm here for a reason. Take a deep breath. And that also that we're human and we have bad days. And sometimes yeah. I'm somewhere that I don't want to be because I've been asked to do something that I don't want to do. Or, or you know, it's just everyone be nice. I think that's the, yeah. Yeah. So do what makes you happy. Be nice. To everyone, yeah. <laughs> and and don't second guess yourself of why you're there. You've been chosen for a reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And similarly, I do, I do really appreciate that when you're, you know, we've asked you to come at five o'clock and you're still there at seven. You know, if someone did that to me, I'd definitely walk out. I wouldn't, you know. But I think but we that's the thing. Is like it's we understand that side of things. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And often that that that's delay true. has happened. Because you something has happened, because or, you know, well. we've suddenly got 10 pages of new direction to do, and we've now got to make that work, even though we've only got this much time, you know. So it's all the directors of the site that have been delayed, and you know, yeah. it happens all the time, yeah. And the snowball effect of that, but I think as long as we keep communicating, so what I normally do is keep going out into the waiting room and saying, Look, guys, this is what's happening, this is why it's happening, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and last one, what makes an actor stand out in a casting? I would say a good listener always stands out for me. Yeah, someone who can take that direction and kind of, because if they've, you know, if they've done a scene and then you give them direction which is completely opposite and they can take it on board and just run with it, that's always quite, or they do something that's maybe slightly unexpected with, maybe there's a part of the script that's written in a certain way, everyone's delivering it because of the way it's written in a certain way and somebody just, the intonation changes or they do something that's just slightly different and it catches you and you're like, oh, you know, it, it's exciting. Yeah, and it doesn't, it, I think that it, it again is project to project, but I just get a weird feeling in my fingers <laughs> and then you just know, but sometimes it's not even something that they've done intentionally. It's yeah, just with them. Yeah. Sometimes someone can walk in and even with their energy, you're like, oh yeah, they've got the job. Yeah. 
they haven't even done anything yet and and you know who knows it's a mystery that's the thing there isn't any one thing is there it just it sometimes it just works it into place that day for some reason that's right and, and that's just for us that people might stand out you know we might go oh well that person's got the job but then the director might see something completely different in someone else and things can go a totally opposite way yeah. from what we thought it might yeah um we can only do our best to bring out the best in you and and show that to our clients i like in my job to being a waitress <laughs> you know <laughs> someone sits down we bring them the tea they drink it they either like it or they don't <laughs> we're glorified uh, <laughs> waitresses guys i wonder if that's gonna make it into the edit <laughs> <laughs> no. i hope so that should be like the tagline yeah <laughs> um okay just three wait waitresses having a chat on a friday morning um all right guys thank you so much for your time that was fabulous. And uh, I guess we'll be seeing you, talking to you soon. And, and I hope that this, um, this chat has answered, you know, a lot of questions for people who might be tuning in. Do subscribe to the CDA YouTube channel because um, there'll be lots more panel discussions coming up over the next few weeks.